everyone. I'm Miss Heather and I'm the Children's Specialist at the Tewksbury Public Library. Welcome to Little Einstein's Science. This time we'll be talking about the science of shadows. So you don't need too much for this activity. You will need a piece of paper or some cardboard, maybe a thicker piece of paper. You will need a flashlight of any kind. You will need a memory game. So for example, my memory game has a picture of an animal and also of its shadow. So that will be good for me to play and practice my learning about shadows. And you will also need some sidewalk chalk. So it could be a big piece like this, but if you don't have any bigger pieces at home, smaller pieces totally work too. Something else you also might need is a sunny day. It's pretty hot today here in Massachusetts. So if it's a little too hot for you outside, maybe save this for a day that's sunny, but a little cooler. So one of the best ways to learn about shadows is to actually go right outside. You can see all sorts of shadows outside. Today is a nice sunny day. You can see the sky is pretty blue and only a few clouds here and there. So we can take a look around and explore some shadows that might be right outside here at the library. So a shadow is caused by the sun coming down and it can't pass through the object that's blocking it. For example, my arm is blocking my face. So you can see a shadow of my hand right on my face. And when I take it away, now the sun can get me. And now I have no shadows on my face because there's nothing between me and the sun. You can see some shadows of the leaves on the ground because like we talked about before, the sun is shining right down, the leaves are getting in the way, and they are causing a shadow to appear right on the ground. You can see all those little different shapes are all of the leaves in the tree. The first thing today that we should do is to take a nature walk all around outside, maybe your backyard or maybe your front yard, wherever you live, if there's a nice spot to walk around. You can explore some shadows and see what's going on right outside and see what's getting in the way of the sun and making a shadow or a dark spot appear on the ground. So I can see some shadows from the trees that I'm standing behind. You can see those are totally blocking the sun and they are making a nice shadow right here on the patio. So take a walk around see what shadows you can find, see if you can figure out what's causing those shadows and why they might look the way that they do. And I'll meet you right back here once you're done exploring. Enjoy! So here I am outside the library with my friend and colleague Miss Cat. We both have our masks on because we don't live in the same house together. But she came outside so that I can trace her with my chalk to see what kind of shadow she makes. Let's check it out. All right, so we know Miss Cat's a strong, awesome person, and she has decided to strike a pose for us. So we can take our sidewalk chalk and go right around her shadow to see what kind of shadow that she makes. And you can get kind of fancy, you can cut out the little parts here, so we know that some sun shone through right there. And we can keep on tracing all around. And I think that looks pretty good to me. That is a tracing of Miss Cat's shadow. We can <laughs> fix the bottom of the feet with a nice little line. So we know where she was standing. All right, and that is a shadow of Miss Cat. We trace Miss Cat who is standing in her strong person pose. We can see that her shadow doesn't really look like a person too much. We can see that it's got some legs and some arms. But if you didn't know she was standing in that pose, you might not realize that that was a shadow of a person at all. So shadows can look different ways depending on how the sun hits it and we know the sun moves across the sky so that's something interesting too to check out how shadows move over the day. You've gone on your nature walk and maybe you trace some of the shadows that you saw. 
it's time to make some shadow puppets of our own. So you can take your piece of paper, or it could be a piece of cardboard, a piece of thicker paper, something that you can make some shadows with. And if you have a black piece of paper, like I do, it's better to draw whatever kind of puppet you want to make with chalk, so that way you can see the line that you want to cut out easier. So let's make some shadow puppets. I'll meet you right back here. So now that you have cut out some shapes from a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper, it's time to test out what you made. And we already know that a shadow is made when the sun or the light can't go through something. It will make a dark spot or a shadow where the sun didn't go through. And usually that dark spot will take the shape of whatever is blocking the light source. So these different shapes, different puppets that you've made are going to be a really great way to test out some shadows. You can go back outside with your shapes or you can use a flashlight and try to see what you can make. You can even put some shapes together and make different things. You can have all sorts of fun making different shadow puppets and different scenes with your shadows by using a flashlight as your light source or by going back outside and trying out the sun again. So I am going to shine my flashlight at the wall behind me right here and make a good spot for my shadows. And I can hold up what I made right in front of the light and you can see I've got a really big square right where my shadow is. So you can continue to do this. You can use just your hand too if you want and try out making some different things. Maybe you want to make an animal. Whatever you want to do, this is a really great way to explore shadows and test out what's light and what's dark. Exploring shadows is also a great time to explore things that are transparent and translucent. So you can use your flashlight again and you can shine it right through an object to see if it's transparent. If you can see right through it. For example, if I hold up this lid in front of my face, you can still see my face because it's transparent. That means that you can see right through it. And you can prove that by shining your flashlight right through it as well. There's nothing there to block the light source, in this case, my flashlight. So you can test out different objects. I have a little strainer here. Looks like some lights going right through there as well. Let's see, I have a pudding cup. Looks like some light can go through. I also have a book about shadows. Let's see if some light can get through there. Nope, no lights going through. My water bottle, you know that water is clear or transparent. You can see right through it. So you can shine your flashlight right through the water as well. Something that's a good example of translucent or something you can't really see through is wax paper or contact paper. So if I hold this up, you can still kind of see my face but you can't totally see it. It's not transparent. It's not clear to see through. It's translucent where you can see just a little bit. So kind of the outlines or the shapes. And you can test that out with your light source as well. You can still see it lets some of the light through, but not as much as it did when we held up something that was uh, transparent and clear like this here lid. And the last thing that we're going to do today to learn about shadows is to play a memory game. So if you picked up one of the bags at the library, it has some sheets like this inside. And so you'll need to cut that sheet out. You can go right on those black lines, right around each of those animals that you see. And once you've got your memory game all cut out, meet me right back here and I'll talk about how to play. So if you never played memory before, there's 
really easy to get started. I'm going to show you my favorite way to play memory. So I'm going to take my cards that I've cut out and I'm going to put these all face down, upside down, on the table in front of me so that I don't see what they are. So once you have all of your cards spread out face down, you are ready to start to play the game Memory. So you can play this by yourself, you can play this with a few other people, but decide who goes first, usually the youngest person goes first. And to get started, all you do is flip over a card, and you flip over another card, and you see if they match. So it looks like here I have an elephant, and maybe a monkey makes that shadow. An elephant and monkey are not the same animal, so that's a miss. They don't match, and I'll flip those right back over. And so now it would be the next person's turn. If you're playing by yourself, then you can certainly go again. So either the next person, or if you're by yourself, you go, and you flip over a toucan, and I got a monkey. So now I'm going to try to remember where I saw that monkey before when it's my turn. And maybe the person who goes next might remember too where that other monkey was and they can flip over the next card. So lion, that's not where the monkey was. Maybe it was here? No, that's not where the monkey was either. So flip those back. And it's the next person's turn, or your turn, if you're playing by yourself. Let's see. Aha! Uh -huh. This is a match. Here is the monkey. Here is its shadow. It's a perfect match. So I won. So now I can put these together and put them aside in a pile that shows all of the pairs that I've won. So put those right over there. And the game keeps going. And it keeps going until all of the cards have been matched up. And then at the end, you can count how many you won, how many pairs you have, and whoever has the most pairs is the winner. This is a really fun game to play. You can play it all different ways. You don't have to just play with shadows. You can play uppercase and lowercase letters, for example. So Memory is a really great game to have in the back of your mind when you're trying to think of some more fun learning activities. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in and watched. You can subscribe to our channel so you never miss another video. And I'll see you right back here in a few weeks time for another little Einstein science video. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. Thanks! Bye!